The Plecto Labs affiliates have all been hard at work testing out the new NeoPixel system for our products. We decided early on that we wanted to use a universal connector so that anyone could order a saber from Evolution Arms and a blade from JQ Sabers or build a saber from the custom saber shop and buy a blade from Vader's Vault. The blades are very durable compared to LED string setups of the past, but in the event that a blade does break, we want the replacement process to be as simple as ordering a new blade from your favorite affiliate vendor. It is also important to mention that we will be offering this system to DIYers through several vendors, including the custom saber shop. Currently, we are finalizing adapters that hold the connectors in systems of all types. Before we designed this connector, I had approached Sloth Furnace about helping me design a different connector for use in six pin crystal focus setups. This connector had to support six pins regardless of orientation and prevent the twisting of wires when sections of a saber were screwed together. I had a few other requirements for the layout of the connector and Brad designed everything to my exact specifications. The connector would utilize pogo pins to contact circular traces on a printed circuit board. It also had to be as thin as possible with this initial connector coming in at under a quarter of an inch. I honestly thought this design would fail, but I tried it anyway. The connector sat in a parts bin for a couple of months, as I didn't have time to properly test them at first. Once I started testing NeoPixels, I decided to try that connector for my blade. I still needed to test the connector, and this would be a more extreme test when compared with its original purpose. I expected to have problems with durability, longevity, and connection reliability. Would the pogo pins disconnect the moment I struck another blade? Would the traces on the printed circuit board wear out too quickly? Would the connector hold up to repeated impacts from dueling? To my surprise, the connector passed all of these tests. At this point, I showed the connector to the rest of the affiliates. It seemed to fit all the requirements laid out for our universal connector. It didn't need to index, and it didn't protrude too far up into the blade or down into the hilt. I brought my prototype to TSL2 so that Vader's vault could see the connector in person. Deanna gave her best impression of an axe murderer, but not once did the connection flicker. I got back in touch with Sloth Furnace, and we designed a dedicated NeoPixel connector for all of the affiliates to test. We ended up with a three-ring, seven-pin design. According to the specifications of the pins, it can pass nine amps to the blade. This connector is 0.73 inches in diameter, so it will fit in one-inch thick-walled blades or seven-eighth inch standard blades. Adapters are being made right now to fit anything from MHS sabers to standard Tri-Cree optics cans. For those of you who aren't familiar with the NeoPixel system, it's a new type of LED string blade that uses flexible printed circuit boards instead of hand soldered together standard LEDs, which are very fragile. These are very durable, flexible. They also provide a much finer ignition effect, the ability to change colors without much extra work. localized blaster impact, and a smooth retraction effect. This new connector provides a way to remove that blade and insert it in any orientation and still maintain all functionality. We're going to move to a different location and do some durability testing so you guys can see just how strong these really are. All right, so this is Josh. He's gonna help me. We're gonna do some durability tests with the NeoPixels. We've gone ahead and put packaging tape on the, uh, the tips of the blades so that we won't lose any tips halfway across the building. And we're just gonna go to town. We don't recommend doing this much dueling, this heavy, without the proper safety gear, but this is just for blade on blade, how hard can you smack it tests. I mean, honestly, if it can survive that impact, I don't know what else you want. You can do TSL level of dueling with this stuff. I don't know that you want to. It's easier if you break a $35 blade to buy a new $35 blade. We don't have exact pricing on this, but they're probably gonna be over a hundred bucks a blade, so.
every pixel on this blade is still illuminated. There's no dead spots. He, he went about really hard there. I mean, I'm surprised that the polycarbonate survived that, but again, there's still no NeoPixel sound anywhere. I'm, I'm even more impressed with this than I was when Diana went like an ax murderer at TSL. They're all still there. Ah, uh, look at that. I actually bent the blade there. Yeah, he actually bent his blade in that one. That's how hard he swung. Again, we'll probably show that close up. So, we just got back from our tests with the standard blade and the standard blade with the NeoPixel strip in it. We ended up with the standard blade kinking. There's all kinds of battle damage. The tip on the standard one is halfway cracked off and the blade cracked with it. The NeoPixel one is fine. The tip got lucky it didn't come off. There's all kinds of scuffs on it. But the good news is, despite all of that, there are zero pixels out anywhere on this blade, in any color. So I have a couple of quick notes about the video. The entire time I was filming, I never actually referenced the fact that the connector not once flickered during the entire time that we were dueling with it. I was mostly referencing the fact that the NeoPixels were still intact, but the connection between the hilt and the blade was perfect the entire time. I also don't have any official pricing or release information to give to you guys just yet, but stay tuned and we'll have that information soon. So thanks for watching everyone, and I'll see you in the next video.